Okay? And, and, and you can tell them, you can, you can tell the folks that they have been, they have a little bit of religion from the local Baptist church, and they have a little bit of understanding, and they want everybody to know that they're on the same uh, line as uh, Spurgeon, uh, you know, or Billy Graham, or anybody else, all right? Okay. All right. They like to argue, to try and convince others to try and legislate morality. You ever seen that Christian there that they like to argue? They want to argue with you about all things Christian. Then they want to legislate morality. Now, I've got to be honest with you. I had an issue with that for a while. Uh, some folks may say I still have it, but... You, can you legislate morality? No. Where does morality come from? God. Which poses a really big problem for an atheist. Or anybody else that doesn't believe in God. If, morals, if good morals come from God, well, they have nothing to base that on. All right? Okay. That's another message for another day. But the Pharisee will try to legislate morality. So they're against all the vices that a person may have. I anybody in here vice free? Uh, I'm not. I got issues. I think we all got issues. We we got we got our little hang ups, you know, we do. We do. Um, but if you get the, the holier than thou Pharisee that will tell you they never done that in their life and they will never do this in their life and how utterly wrong you are for you doing it. Alright? Now keep that guy in mind. We're going to find out a little bit more about him here in a little bit. So so they're against all the vices some people have and everything they are against is presented before the gospel of Christ. Alright? So, before Tom would come up to me, excuse me, before I would go to Tom and tell him, Jesus loves you, you can be saved today, and Christ died for you, I would tell him how wrong he is about this, that, 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 how wrong the pastor is, how wrong the pastor's wife is, the person on the fourth row from the left, and everything else. I would tell him all of that before I told him about Christ and the saving power of Jesus' blood. Amen? Alright, now is there anything wrong with that? Yes, everything. Absolutely everything. Alright, so you see where we're going here. I really like this one here. They believe God needs them. Y'all seen that person before? God needs me. Yeah, no. Psalm 84 declares that God doesn't need us. Excuse me, Psalm 8 and 4 declares that God doesn't need us. What is man that God should be mindful of? That's Mike's paraphrase version, but you can jot that down and look it up. What, what, is, what is man that God should be mindful of? We're made of dirt. <laughs> That's it. We're made of dirt. Praise God. All right. Consider this. If God needs a human for his church to survive... He's not a God worth serving. If God needs me for His universal church, all the Christians that have ever lived and are living and are going to live, if He needs me to help that church survive, well, we're in trouble because I'm going to fail. Guess what? You're going to fail too, right? Yes, we are. <clears throat> All right. Louisiana, Jesse Duplantis. 
prosperity gospel preacher. Um, you can look it up on YouTube. Jesse Duplantis says that Christ came to him, or God, God came to him and said, Jesse, he said, I'm just going to write somebody off. Jesse said, no, I'm not. He, no, he, well, hold on, let me back up. God came to him and said, um, Jesse, we're going to talk. He said, so and so, he said, I'm just going to write them off. So Jesse says, this is told for truth, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> says, uh, said, um, oh gosh. He said, well, well, Lord, I don't know about that. He said, won't you give me, give me some time with him. Let me talk to him and see what I can do with him. God said, oh, okay, okay. Really? He's, he's cracked in the head. Pharisee. Heretic. And everything else you can roll up and put in that one mold right there. Alright? Money would be, be number one. Amen. That's right. That's right. If, if God asked me for help, something's wrong. God spoke everything into existence. He does he did it a long time before I got here. He doesn't need me. Now, God allows us to help. God allows us to play a role in this. I'm filling a role right now. Not as good as our pastor, but I'm filling a role right now. All right? To preach and to bring forth his word. All right? Now, on the order of Mr. Duplantis, Romans 12, 3 came to mind. And it says, don't think too highly of ourselves. <laughs> All right? Don't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. All right. <clears throat> Modern Pharisees. They don't repent of sin. All right? Don't repent of sin. Because they really don't have any sin really worth repenting of. It's really not that bad. You know, I'm really not bad. I'm not near as bad as him. You know. At least I didn't call your name this time. I'm really not as bad as him. You know. Y'all still remember the, the old guy, the peacock strutting around, you know. I'm really not that bad. Look in verses 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew 23. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feast and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi all right what do we got going on here mr holier than thou they do it to be seen of men all right look at me look at me now the Phylacteries are talking about was a little a little case that they put scriptures in, and they would put on their arms and they would put on their foreheads with a little belt, so they carried the scriptures with them. All right, now <laughs> this is kind of out of proportion, but if you kind of judge it by what they're saying, it would be like when they make broad their phylacteries would be walking around with a Bible on their forehead like that. Look at me. Look at me. I've got this going. And then they'd have one on their arm. All right. <clears throat> you remember Sanford and Son? You remember, you remember Aunt Esther? Okay. All right. I'm not saying she was a Pharisee, but she was kind of over the top. And, but everywhere she went, she took her Bible, right? She took her Bible. All right. It would that illustration would have worked out a lot better if she had had a, a big family Bible. It would have worked out a lot better. But nonetheless. All right. <clears throat> Fair 
Pharisees have a reputation to maintain. Yes, they have a reputation to maintain. Uh, a status to maintain. Remember the peacock. Look at me. Look at me. Repentance involves vulnerability and weakness. It means you need help. When you repent, you're coming to God, asking Him to forgive you, and you're turning from your sin. All right? Pharisees don't show weakness. One of the, uh, kind of on a side note, one of the, the things I'm having to get used to with having a bad back and a hernia and getting older, I got a 19 year old helper now, and uh, I need you to get that. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed to do it now. You know, I'm, I mean, shoot, man, I'm about 6'1, 280 something. Wow, I got that. Here, get that. Sorry. Right. And if you see us together, it's like David and Goliath. You know, he's, he's about that tall, about 140 pounds soaking wet. It like weighs about what my legs do. <laughs> Repentance is for people who really sin bad. <laughs> it's really not for them. It's for people who really sin bad. Did Adam sin bad? He did, yeah. But it was just a small sin, wasn't it? Adam didn't burn down the world. Adam didn't kill nobody. But it was a bad sin, right? All right. All right. They don't condone, oh no. They don't condone homosexuality or fornication but don't have a problem being entertained by it on TV. Man. Well. They can sit through a sermon against adultery, fornication, homosexuality, etc. Maybe stand up and amen the preacher. You got it preacher, preach it. That's good stuff right there. I read it last week. That is good preaching. Preaching against drugs, adultery, fornication, getting drunk. Whole list goes on and on. And then going home. Pastor, that was a good sermon. Get the remote, turn the TV on. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Some of that kind of hurts, doesn't it? The stuff that is preached against, we watch for entertainment. All right? I remember, I remember years ago, well, you, you can still see it now, Three's Company. All right? Um... I'd watched a couple of episodes of it here a while back. And so y'all know Jack played the homosexual. So he could told the landlord that, you know, he was gay so he could live there with the two women and not get thrown out. Well, whenever the, the landlord would get around him, what would he do? He would just turn his nose up and just, you know, act like we should act. Well... He was, he was putting into actions how we should feel. Let me, let me re-say that. We should not turn up our noses. We should not look on them with disgust. We should pray for all sinners. We should pray for all people that are astray like that. And as we have the opportunity, witness to them. All right? But that's just how far America in general has come. That our pastor can preach a really good sermon <clears throat> and we'll just go and be entertained by it. We could be entertained by what he just preached against and what we know God says is an abomination. All right? All right? 
They want people to think that they are righteous, wholesome, and when they're around others, they really want to have that come forth. You know, remember the peacock. Look at me. You know, I got my tail feathers out. I'm just, I'm really styling. Me and God's got this. God needs me. God told me the other day that He needs me here doing this. You're wrong. You shouldn't be living that lifestyle. I don't live that lifestyle, as far as you know, until I go home and do whatever I do. What is integrity? Integrity is doing in the dark what people can't see. Amen? All right. So, they want people to think they're righteous, wholesome, when they're around other people. But hey, they just left church. I was just in a church service. I served coffee. I helped with the offering. I was in a really good Sunday school class. You know, he, he taught something real good. I couldn't quite tell you what it was he taught, but it was something real good. Yeah, all right. But hey, we just went to church, you know. They believe outsiders should conform to their standard before they are accepted as a Christian. Y'all seen that, yeah? If, if the amount of people I've had tell me, well, I went to such and such church, and because I didn't have on a suit, that they didn't want me there, have been told that. Um... Or they walk in with the best that they have and people turn their nose up at them. I so hope we never do that here. Never, ever. Because when I was lost and on my way to hell at 27 years old, I had hair almost to my waist, I had a beard, I had a nice t-shirt, and I had a nice pair of blue jeans and cowboy boots. And that's what I went in. That's how I went in. And I would hope that we would treat those people just like they treated me. We just, but we're so glad to see you. We're so glad to have you here. That's how I hope that we would treat folks like that, all right? All right. They believe people have to clean up before being saved. Dress this way. Um, we've all heard the stories. Christ does the cleaning up for us after we're saved. You ever, heard, you ever been witnessing to somebody or just talking with them? And yeah, I need to do this before I quit going to church. You heard that? Yep, no, that's fallacy. Absolutely wrong. I'm going to give you three scriptures. You can write them down. You don't have to turn to them. <clears throat> Psalm 51 and 2 says, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Psalm 51, 7. Purge me with hyssop. And I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Doesn't sound like I have an opportunity to clean up nothing, does it? Who does the cleaning up? God does. He does the cleaning up. We come to him just as we are. What do we have to offer him to clean us up? I mean, if, 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 if I had quit doing everything before I got saved and came to him, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have just delayed the process of getting saved. All right? So if, if you want to write that down, Psalm 51, 2, Psalm 51, 7, and 1 John 1 and 9. Pharisees want people to come up to their level. Remember the peacock. Peacock on the front porch on a handrail. Oh, he's really up there. They want people to come up to their level. But until they do, 
Well, until you really get to my level, you're just on the outside looking in. Alright? As I strut about. If I was pharisaical. You've got to come up to me. We've all seen them in churches. We don't have none here. They're not having none here. When they, they look down on you. You know? I heard I heard about particular church, large church, had a large service. One of the deacons, he had been a deacon for a long, long time. I think he was like in his 80s. There was this young man come in. Raggedy clothes, long stringy hair, scruffy beard. He came in. There was nowhere for him to sit. The place was packed. He came down the aisle and he sat down here on the floor. Everybody's holding their breath because the, the older deacon got up. They said, boy, he's fixing to get it now. He's fit to go down there straighten that young man out. The old man, it took him a minute or two to walk down there. He got down there beside him. He sat down right beside him on the floor. Amen. Praise God and worshiped and praised God with him right there. Amen. Amen. That's how we should be. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. They don't know the difference between a convert and a, tra and a transfer. They're only looking at numbers. Do we know the difference between a convert and somebody transferring from a sister Baptist church? We should. Converts when they get saved, amen? If they transfer and they transfer with a letter, they should have been saved when they joined that other church. But that's to be asked, all right? But all them folks are interested in is numbers. Numbers. We're interested in watching people grow here because we want us to grow to where we can make disciples, where we can go out and knock on doors, where we can go out and hang door hangers out there, where lost people will come in and can hear the gospel and can get saved. Amen? All right. If someone tries to rebuke them, they get mad and offended. Y'all seen that person, ain't you? Mr. Holier Than Thou Peacock, y'all seen him? Yes, sir. Remember in scripture when Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and they had broken hearts, repented, and they was used by Jesus to, t to start the church? Anybody remember seeing that in scripture anywhere? Pastor, you've been doing this probably most, longer than most of us have been around. You're not familiar with that scripture where he rebuked the Pharisees and they went on to spread the church and the church grew with a, with a wild passion for God through the Pharisees? No, it didn't happen. All right. Quit trying to look it up. It didn't happen. All right. It didn't happen. We cannot be effective Christians, effective witnesses effective tools for God if we're looking down our long Pharisee nose with our holier than thou attitudes toward a lost and dying world we can't do it alright now this tends to hold true for a lot of sermons not the pastors because he's a good preacher but a lot of the word is Word of God is caught rather than taught. All right? Now, y'all will remember the peacock thing I said for a long time. It's just like the beans. Y'all remember the bean message from a year or two ago? All right. Y'all will remember the peacock for a long time. Let's don't be that peacock. Let's be that tool of God. Let's honor him in everything we do. All right. So where are we going with this here? So here's the application. Conclusion. 
Sometimes people wind up being a Pharisee. It happens. All right? Remember, the Pharisees in the Bible didn't start out being as they were. They became that way. Because they added to the Word of God. They added their traditions to God's Word. Same as the Pharisees then. Excuse me. Sometimes people wind up being a Pharisee. They didn't start out like that though. Same as the Pharisees then. It's kind of like when you leave here on Sunday... And this is just simply because we've had a not real good experience at a particular restaurant. We left church and, and uh, we were going to church way back over across yonder. And I'm not, I'm not going to call the name of the church because that just goes out everywhere. It, the, na the name of the uh, restaurant. But it's like wanting to go to your favorite restaurant. You drive around, you can't get in there, it's full. So you go to a substandard restaurant. All right? You just settle. All right? That's kind of how the Phariseeism can be equated to winding up, all right? You're not able to go to you're not able to go to Longhorn, so you go to the other one, okay? The substandard one. Stay with the Longhorn restaurant, all right? Okay. Don't be the Pharisee. Love everybody. When that person comes in here, offer them a seat if there's nowhere to sit, if you can. Love them. Point them to Christ. All right? All right. That's it. That's what I got. Let's don't be a Pharisee, okay? Let's pray and we'll be dismissed, all right? Lord God, we do thank you, Father, for this time we've had together. Lord, we thank you for your word, your mercy and grace. Lord, I ask that you would allow us to take this message, apply it to our lives, and Lord, be the godly, loving children that you would have us to be, Lord. Lord, nothing like the Pharisees. And Lord, anything that we may have in us like that, I ask that you would bring it to our attention, Lord, so we can stop it. Lord, that you would be glorified and honored. And Lord, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys dismissed. Thank you.